Yes, so we can hear corrosion, rusting. Um, corrosion, rusting. Okay. Sir, can you repeat the question? What are the different types of chemical reaction? Oxidation, reduction, redox. So like combination reactions, decomposition reactions, yes. then displacement and then double uh, oxidation displacement, reduction. Double displacement and redox. Oxidation reduction and then uh, yes. neutralization. Neutralization. So first one is a combination reaction. What is the meaning of combination reaction? So when uh, two two, two reactions more different come together uh, to form elements. one product. When two or more different elements or compounds combined to form different substances. Combined to form one product. Elements or the compounds. Combined to form. Single product is called as a combination reaction, right? <coughs> so, in order the two or more substances, it can be element or the compound. Combined to form single product is called as a combination reaction. The best one is a x plus y will always will form x y. That is the general form of our combination reaction. Fine. Can you tell me one random example? Calcium oxide plus high, uh, water gives calcium carbonate. So, like uh, lime water plus uh, water, sorry, quick lime plus water is equal to slate lime. Very good. Quick lime and the calcium oxide plus water, plus water equal to slate lime. So, calcium carbonate or slate lime. Sir, uh, magnesium plus oxygen gives magnesium oxide. Can we write that? Yeah, I can write. So it says lead lime plus uh, carbon dioxide equal to calcium carbonate. Two magnesium oxide plus oxygen will give two MgO. Combination good. Next. So lead lime plus uh, carbon dioxide equal to calcium carbonate. Lead lime plus carbon dioxide. Yeah, do you know this equation part? We'll, I'll teach you here itself. We'll use PSAO3. Okay. After this method, I'll teach you that one. What is the whitewashing of walls? Next, any other examples? Combustion examples are comes under the combination reaction. Combustion reactions. Do you know what is the general formula for combustion reaction? Yes, yeah, so it's like CH plus HY is equal to HY plus X plus okay. Y by 4. O2 used as to x zero two plus y by two h two. This is a combustion reaction, so all the combustion reactions will come out of the combination reaction. Okay, so this is a simple combination reaction. Any doubts in this? Any doubts in this? No doubts, sir. Okay, and one more important point is. Most of the combination reactions are exothermic reactions. I'm saying most of the only, not all. Sir, so can you give some example? Endothermic. Ah, uh, like endothermic now? Yes, sir. Endothermic uh, combination. Combination and endothermic. Just wait a minute. Can you show the second one properly? Sorry? Sir, can you show the second one? Yeah, yeah,
So once can you scroll up to combination, sir? Okay. One minute, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Just wait a minute. I'll check for the any other reactions up there for the combination. See, I said most of the combustion reactions are exothermic reaction, right? Right. If you take this example, like NH4Cl, what NH4? Oh, okay. So NH4Cl plus H2 it is in the solid state. It is in the one minute, the capture problem is there. Okay. So if we take NH4Cl and the H2O, it is in the solid state, it is in the liquid state. Now we are making the aqueous solution format now. It is an endothermic process. It will form NH4Cl only, but it is in the aqueous state. Understanding. So this is the example for yeah. the endothermic. When you take the combination react combination reactions, most of them are the exothermic reactions only. Sorry, I said combustion reactions here. So most of the combination reactions are endothermic reactions. Clear now? So combustion re combustion yeah. reactions yeah. are always an exothermic only. There is no doubt at all. Whatever the combustion reaction you take, that is exothermic only. Combustion means what? The heat in the uh, the substance reacting with oxygen. Yeah. So next we go to the decomposition reaction. And what is the meaning of decomposition? So breakdown of substance into simpler constitutes. Decomposition means? into the Simpler compounds. Breakdown of a substance into simpler compounds. Okay. How we can break down this one with the help of heat or light or electricity. Okay, so you can break down the one complex substance into the simpler substance with the help of heat, light, and electricity. So again, there are the three different types of decomposition reactions are there. So first one is what in that? Thermal. Thermal. So thermal means what? Decomposition. The decomposition is done under heat by providing heat. Decomposition happen in the presence of heat. Okay. Any example? Calcium carbonate. Hmm? Calcium carbonate. Okay, calcium carbonate to take example. CaCO3 upon heating will form CaO plus CO2 plus CO2. Okay. Next, any other example? 
any other example do you know ferrous sulfate ferrous sulfate so ferrous sulfate uh, under heat decomposes into ferric oxide upon heating will form the ferrous sulfate sulfur dioxide plus sulfur, sulfur dioxide. dioxide very good so just place two feso4 upon heating will form two fe2o3 and so2 plus so3 now so net uh, lead nitrate also very good lead nitrate in presence of heat it forms uh, lead oxide of nitrogen form, dioxide lead oxide plus nitrogen dioxide plus oxygen, oxygen. okay good but this is very important in the lead nitrate example they will ask you like this to take this example itself description of this example in the exam they have asked last year like which metal nitrate upon undergoing the thermal decomposition will produce the brown color fumes what is the answer the brown color brown color fumes so let me check hmm copper sorry Sir. The answer is lead nitrate because your nitrogen oxide, uh, when heated, it forms into brown fumes, and lead nitrate is a precipitate. See here, the last question like this: the metal nitrate, which undergoes the thermal decomposition, will produce the brown color fumes. What is that metal nitrate? Lead nitrate. It is a lead nitrate. Good. Okay. So, what is the gas name of the brown color fumes? Nitrogen dioxide. Nitrogen dioxide. What is the gas name? Nitrogen dioxide gas. It is in the solid. It is in the gaseous state. Now, what is the lead oxide color? Yellow. Yellow color. Good. What is the lead nitrate color? Right. So, but how, like, how can we know that it is in red color and it is brown in color? How can we know that? Sir? By looking at the salts and can say, or you can remember that. Sir. That one. Sorry, sir. For can red, you repeat? White color, it's not the yellow color, red color. Yeah. So you're asking, right? How to know that is the salt is the yellow color or the white color or the this one? So when you go to the laboratory, we can see the different types of salts, right? Actually, they will exist in the same color. That you have to remember, actually. Apart from yes. that, you can't do anything. Suppose if you go, if you take the ferrous sulfate, we can see it in the lab. It is in the form of crystal structure, like salt. Yes, like how so you can see the common salt? No, it is a green color, ferrous sulfate. Common salt in the sense. Common salt is a white color, but if you go and see the ferrous sulfate crystals, now it is in the green color. Okay, and iron oxide. This is a brown color, like this. So you have to remember compulsory these colors of the salt. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So clear, right? Whenever you are heating the lead nitrate, it will produce a lead oxide, NO2, and the O2 gas. So NO2 is a nitrogen dioxide gas, which will show brown color fumes. Upon the decomposition of lead nitrate, and lead oxide is a yellow in color, lead nitrate is a white in color. Fine. Now tell me, what is the nature of lead oxide? Is it the acidic nature or the basic nature? Hmm. What is the nature of lead oxide? Can you hear me? Okay, first before that conformation, metal oxides are what uh, nature, and non-metal oxides are what nature. So metal oxides are uh, what do you say? Acidic and non-metal oxides are basic, right? So, or is it the opposite? You are telling correct or the opposite? Uh, that's what I don't know, sir. 
Okay, no problem. Metal oxides are basic in nature. Metal oxides are basic in nature. Non-metal oxides are acidic in nature. Okay. Yes, sir. Metal oxides are basic in nature. Non-metal oxides are acidic in nature. So, if you take the lead oxide, is it a metal oxide or not? So, uh, it's a metal oxide, sir. Hmm. Metal oxide. Metal oxide. Now there is a basic nature. Yes, sir. What about the NO2 nature? It is one of the previous year question. So, what is the nature of brown color fumes producing during the decomposition of lead nitrate? Acidic, basic, neutral, neither acidic nor base. Sorry, amphoteric. Those are the options. So, what is the nature of NO2 here? Nitrogen is a non metal, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How to identify the metals and non metals? Guys, reply. So, can you repeat the question? Do you have any confusion in identifying the metal or the non metal? No, sir. Okay, so nitrogen is a non metal. So, it will form the acidic oxides. Okay. Yes, sir. It will form the basic oxides. Fine. In the same way, instead of lead nitrate, right? if I have taken the copper nitrate, what will you get? So black color. Very good. Can you tell me what are the products here? What are the products here? The copper nitrogen oxygen. Copper? Nitrogen and oxygen. Already copper nitrate is only there, right? So I guess yes. we'll get copper oxide and uh, NO2. You'll get the copper oxide. What is the formula? CO2. So you to any other formula? Sir, I think uh, CUO. Okay. Out of these three, who will vote for this third one? Just raise the hands. See, we have the two formulas for the copper oxide cuo and cu2o do you know where we'll use the cuprous and where we'll use the cupric the cupric is for three valency of copper and cuprous is for two no actually cuprous is for the one valency cupric is for the two valency okay. in ferrous we'll do that one ferrous na plus two ferric na plus three okay. simple is the ous we'll use in the last for the lower oxidation number IC we will use in the last for the higher oxidation number. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So here it will form only the CUO. Okay. Cupric oxide, copper, two oxide we can mention. Okay. Plus NO2 gas, plus O2 gas. Simple. Same. Just they'll change the terms. But here, what is the nature of this CUO again? So it's basic. Uh, basic, sir. Hmm? So basic. 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 Any difference is there? Sir, it's non metal. Sir, it's metal. Hmm? That copper is a metal, so it's basic in nature. Sorry? Like copper is a metal. Copper is a metal. So Copper is a metal. 
कॉपर इज अटल मेटल मेटल सो इट इज अ बेसिक नेचर ओके ओके सो एनी डाउट इन दिस थर्मल डिकम्पोजिशन सी द टॉपिक इज नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट वी आर डूइंग द पर्टिकुलर सॉल्ट ऑफ थर्मल डिकम्पोजिशन वॉट आर द प्रोडक्ट आर फॉर्मिंग एंड अलॉन्ग विद दट वॉट इज द कलर ऑफ दट सब्सटेंस then what is the nature of the substance that is important from this topic in the thermal decomposition clear yes sir okay next one next one you know already photoelectric decomposition so you have to tell what is the answer so like the uh, silver chloride silver chloride hmm. agcl uh, into sunlight so silver bromide So what is this first meaning? So the decomposition through light. Sunlight. Decomposition happens through sunlight. In the presence of sunlight. Light you can take. Okay, it cannot be sunlight always. It can be any light. Yes, sir. So if you take example like AgCl. Upon decomposition. Ag plus Cl two. Ag plus Cl two. Cl two. Okay. Then silver bromide. Then silver bromide. AgBr. Two Ag plus Br two. Okay. So whatever the decomposition happen in the presence of sunlight, that is a photoelectric decomposition. So generally, if you take the For black and white photography in the olden days, which chemicals were used? So fluorescent. You know, in olden days, cameras we have the black and white photography reels will be there. So you take yes. when you take that camera reel, there will be some chemical on that, right? They they will be washing with that chemical, sir. Yeah, they will wash with some negative. We'll say I don't have exact idea. Generally, yes, in olden days, we have the one camera reel will be there. So when you click on the flash, we'll take the picture, and after that, we'll take that reel to the some shop or photo uh, photo studios. There they will wash with some chemicals. Then we'll get the original picture. Yes or no? Yes. Sir. Yes, sir. That chemical reel is made up of AgCl or the AgBr. Okay. So the complete principle is working on the photoelectric decomposition only. whenever you are clicking clicking the flash light the light will fall on the reels so that whatever the agcl is there on the reel it will split up into the ag and the cl2 understanding yes so sir in the olden days photography yes, the black and white photography will use the chemical like agcl agbr okay then what is the color of agcl Color. White. It is a grey. Okay. Or you can take silver. Silver color itself, right? That's better. Yes. Yeah, This is a silver. Silver. AgCl is a white color. AgBr is a yellow color. Okay. So generally, black and white photography will use the two chemicals most commonly. That is AgCl and the AgBr. Next, third one. Um, electrolytic decomposition. So, what is electrolytic decomposition? 
सर डीकम्पोजिशन थ्रू इलेक्ट्रिसिटी डीकम्पोजिशन थ्रू इलेक्ट्रिसिटी डीकम्पोजिशन हैपन इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इन दिस वी हैव द इलेक्ट्रोलाइसिस एक्सपेरिमेंट इज देयर so there will be one or two spelling mistakes check it once again okay don't write mistakes and all in your notebooks first of all are you writing the running notes yes sir yes, yes sir it's important so especially those students already know to whom i thought in last year kavya yes sir the notes is there with you yes it's there okay So electrolytic decomposition means what? Decomposition happens in the presence of electricity. The best example is the water given in the textbook, and it is a common question in the exam. Suppose you have taken the one electrolysis bath here, and uh, they have taken the two electrodes. Right? So the one is a cathode. so i'll take this as a anode the other one is a cathode and they have taken some water in this now when you are passing the electricity what will happen so what will break down so if you take the equation part it is a 2h2o upon the electrolysis will form 2H2 plus O2. The important question is what here? In what ratios the volume of hydrogen to the oxygen gas is formed? Two is to one. Two is to one, sir. Two is to one, sir. Volume of hydrogen to oxygen formed during electrolysis. is 2 is to 1 okay that means where the hydrogen will be formed that is also important where the hydrogen is formed and where is the oxygen is formed first so hydrogen at uh, an uh, cathode hydrogen at the Oxygen is formed at anode, and the hydrogen is formed at cathode. Very good. Do you know hydrogen means plus positive charge, right? Yes, sir. H two plus and then O H minus. Yes, sir. Oxygen means negative charge. Negative will go and attach with the anode. Anode is a positive one. Hydrogen is a positive. It will go and attach with the negative cathode. So wherever the form gas is forming at the cathode is the H two gas. The gas formed at the anode is a O two gas. Clear this one? Yes. So can you once repeat? I just note down. Okay. See, we know hydrogen. Hydrogen always will form plus one, right? Positive charge. Yes, sir. yes, sir. So positive will attract nearby the cathode because cathode is a negative. Okay. Sir. Now oxygen is negative. So it will go and attract with the positive electrode. Anode is a positive. Sir, hi. Uh, so one question, sir. Yeah. Sir, I want uh, water to be in H two plus O H minus. Sorry. Like uh, it is H two plus O H minus like water. H two plus O H minus. Ah. Uh. Yes, sir. Like the hydrogen side is also formed. Like. No, actually, when you take the water itself. It is like H plus plus O H minus. Yeah, sir. Yeah. But so the decomposition also is it O H minus right? We are taking the two water molecules, the H plus H plus, and we will combine. Okay. Yes, yeah, sir. And it will form the hydrogen gas. It also O and O will combine to form the oxygen gas. Again, here H plus H plus will combine. Like that, so it is a decomposition is simple only. Actually, if you take the water simple, now it is a H plus and O H minus ions will be there. 
but that is a covalent compound right not the ionic compound yes sir so covalent compound na cations and anions will not form in water right so only this not h plus ions and oh minus ions separately yes sir okay so the volume of the gas obtained at the anode to the cathode also they can ask they will not ask you what is the volume of the gas obtained of hydrogen and oxygen they will ask you like this also what is the volume of the gas obtained at the anode to the cathode or cathode to the anode you should be in the position to understand these two questions is it clear now yes sir how can we first yes which one is the positive electrode here anode or cathode anode anode is a positive terminal cathode is a negative terminal negative terminal up to this any doubts no, no sir clear everything yes, yes sir, sir. Yes. So do you have textbooks with you right now? Yes. Yes, yes sir. sir. Just you go through those textbooks, these topics. If any doubts are there, you can ask me. Just I'll join within two minutes. Okay. Okay, sir. Don't leave the meeting or don't do any other things. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, three students left. Ah. Huh? Any doubts? No doubts, sir. Shall we move to next topic? Yes, sir. Okay. So next one is what? It's very important displacement reaction. Because if you go for the third chapter, also we have again the same topic displacement reaction. So, what is the definition for the displacement reaction? A higher reactive metal displaces lower reactive metal. Higher reactive metal will displace the lower reactive metal. Okay, but how to identify this high reactive metal and how low reactive metal? The reactivity series. Now the reactivity series. Whatever the remaining candidates, are you understanding? Only few people are replying. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. we have in third lessons, third chapters, a reactivity series. Yeah, but in your school, that chapter right. not finished. No, sir. I I just got to know that we have reactive due to. Like if we know reactivity series, we'll be understanding better. Okay. Now can you tell me some elements in that then, Harini? Yes. Yeah. What is the so starting element? Some, so you told some tricks, sir. Yeah, I already told you trick in the last year itself. Now Harini will tell the examples. Sir, I actually I know that. Uh, as in the textbook zinc and lead are more reactivity reactive metals from copper that's all you know yes sir i like i have asked sir, doubt how can we know zinc and lead are more reactive than copper so our teacher said that uh, you have you will be having reactivity series in the chapter 3 you will be knowing that okay see compulsory how to remember the reactivity series there is no other go Further, I will teach you the shortcut how to remember that reactivity series. So it's yeah. like please stop calling me a careless zebra instead learn how copper. Please stop calling me. Calling me a, a careless zebra. Careless zebra. Instead learn how. Instead learn Le how copper. How copper saves. Gold and silver. Platinum. Gold? Platinum. Ah, man. Gold and platinum. Okay. So, 
this is a complete series first of all write the series here then it will be easy for us first p for first you have the lithium here starting of the element p for potassium s for sodium c for calcium m for magnesium c each and every letter we have the one element in that way i made this mnemonics please stop calling me a careless zebra instead learn how copper saves gold platinum so lithium is a starting p for potassium s for sodium c for calcium m for magnesium a for aluminium and this c stands for carbon this is a zinc this is for the i for iron l for lead h for hydrogen which is very important c for copper s for silver g for gold and p for platinum understand this one now yes sir okay so what is the starting element in the reactor series potassium lithium lithium potassium sodium sodium calcium magnesium calcium magnesium aluminium carbon zinc iron lead what is the next hydrogen hydrogen sir hydrogen copper silver gold gold and platinum platinum so this is a complete reactive series your wish if you remember in the direct now you can remember or else you can remember that shortcut trick and you can say okay but the order should not be changed that is the important thing we should not say like lithium potassium magnesium aluminium sodium calcium and all we should not change the order understanding so if you remember yes. this small trick now you can you can remember all the elements in the order that's important thing i'll so ask you next yeah i'll post it in the google classroom okay. better you can take one screenshot now itself why you can i missed the notes at the top sorry i missed the few notes sir yeah already uploaded everything in the google classroom you can no, go sir, on sir let me see this class just now i missed the notes okay okay no issue at all i will post this in the classroom okay now see here listen here carefully because it will cover in the two chapters first i will write the important points here characteristics so characteristics of reactivity series again which is very important in that chapter so we'll learn here itself first one elements present so top to bottom what is happening increasing reactivity is increasing actually i didn't write that when reactivity increasing okay so element present in starting of series can lose electron easily can lose electron easily that is the first characteristics okay second one so like in lithium the valence electron is more close to the nu nucleus right nucleus okay so it will be difficult uh, for it to lose because nucleus will attract it uh, with a greater force very good but if the lithium want to get the duplet configuration of helium it has to lose the electron right yes sir because lithium is not stable we want either duplet or the octet octet is not possible for lithium so obviously it has to get the duplet so to get the duplet configuration lithium has to lose one electron understanding singer yes sir, but potassium and lithium has to lose one electron yeah. so it will be easier for potassium to lose one electron right because uh, the valence electron is farther from yeah. the nucleus it is 19 now 
if it choose one electron now fraction will get less one it will get the argon noble gas configuration right yes sir then it will become more stable so but when both have to lose one electron then uh, why are they top and bottom see again the reactive series is based upon the uh, atomic size and everything also will come into the picture actually okay so if it study the periodic table properly the top to bottom atomic size will increase okay there again you will study the metallic character in separately in that chapter in the time we will discuss that one okay yes sir so next one so what is the second point here now element present above element which is present above is more reactive than element which is present below what do you understand from this so like the reactivity series uh, decrease from top to bottom suppose you have taken the magnesium now which elements are more reactive than magnesium calcium lithium. sodium potassium lithium lithium potassium calcium okay sodium these are the more reactive which are the less reactive than magnesium aluminium carbon yeah. zinc iron ore carbon zinc lead iron all these things good next suppose if you have taken instead of magnesium you have taken the hydrogen so compared to hydrogen which one is a more reactive compared to so hydrogen lead lead uh, iron zinc carbon all these are the more reactive all will be coming yes sir all these are the less reactive compared to the hydrogen clear yes sir clear so element which is present above in the series is more reactive than the element which is present below in the series fine so now it is easy right for you to remember the series yes, yes sir. sir so these are two important characteristics the remaining things we'll study in the next uh, that chapter itself any doubts in the series no sir okay now we'll write the example we have one more definition also here i said what is this i said in the starting definition part reaction in which high reactive metal will displace the low reactive metal that's a one definition if you want another definition now it is a chemical reaction between element and compound this is a chemical reaction between the element and compound in which more reactive element will displace the least reactive element from the compound i don't know how many of you are understanding my handwriting no sir understand it is a listen carefully now itself it is a chemical reaction between the element and compound in which more reactive element will displace the least reactive element from the compound is it clear Yes, sir. I'll explain this one with the example first. So, if we take the examples here, first one, like we have taken the copper plus FeSO4, we'll use what? Next example, zinc plus FeSO4, we'll use what? Third example. iron plus cuso4 will give us what now tell me copper is more reactive or iron is more reactive sir iron 
will minimize the screen. Okay. So iron is more reactive than the copper. So copper is less reactive. Iron is more reactive. So the reaction will take place here now. No. Sir, no reaction here because copper is less reactive, right? So copper cannot go and displace the iron. Understanding? If you take the iron here, copper here, the copper is least reactive than the iron. Then copper cannot displace the iron, right? Yes, sir. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Now, second one, you tell me. Zinc plus iron sulfate. Where is zinc and where is iron sulfate? So zinc. So zinc is more reactive than iron. Then whether it will displace? So I think yes. Again, thinking only, not hundred percent confident. Confidence. Yes, yes, zinc, zinc is more reactive. So zinc. Uh, this is less reactive. Now see here. It is a chemical reaction between the element, right? Zinc is the element. It is a chemical reaction between the element and the compound. Yes or no? Zinc plus FeSO4 gives rise yes. to zinc sulfate zinc. plus Fe. So it is a chemical reaction between the element and the compound. And in which the element of more reactive will go and displace the element of least reactive from the compound clear now yes sir clear if the element is more reactive from the given metal atom in the compound now it will undergo displacement if it is not reactive now no displacement reaction simple are you understanding or am i confusing you no sir understand so zinc sulfate plus iron Okay. Yes. Let's wait a minute. What happened? Wait a minute. Clear now? Up to displacement reaction. Yes, sir. Now, when you take the acids, generally acids will contain the H plus common, right? Okay. So, when you take the acids, acids are having the H plus ion common. So, which one is the active metal is there? Active metal means what? Which one of the metals are there in the starting of the reactive series? Those are the active metals. Okay. So, which one of the active metal is there? It will be displaced the hydrogen from the acid and form the respective salts. Okay. Now this reaction is possible. Fe plus CuSO4. Tell me fast. Sir, FeSO4 plus Cu. Generally, this we have one activity in the textbook. In the NCRT textbook, we have one activity on this. Can anyone have to tell me what is that activity? So, like, uh, Sir, iron, nail. iron nails in copper sulfate. Iron nail in the copper sulfate. Very good. What is the color of copper sulfate? Blue. Blue color. When you dip the iron nail in the copper sulfate, it will form the ferrous sulfate. What is the ferrous sulfate color? Pale green. Green or the pale green. And whatever the copper is there, it will go and deposit on the iron nail. Right? So like, uh, will let iron nail become copper nail now? No, no, no. Just the copper will go and deposit on the iron nail. That's all the difference. Okay. 
once you rub with the cloth or something na that copper will deposition will be removed yes yeah, sir so when you go sir. for the practicals in the school you can observe this experiment sir yeah so you said uh, in the reactivity series we have active me active metal sorry this metals right okay. yes sir until like until where they are so just wait a minute just wait a minute yes sir so these are the active metals actually lithium potassium sodium calcium magnesium but when you take the active metals sir this is the most active of the set up to this this is also active only you can say or generally we will say active now what are the starting elements are there these are the active the last elements are there right like copper this thing yes sir these are the least reactive metals noble metals are uh, uh, very good noble metals you can say platinum gold so these are the noble metals like uh, gold platinum and silver or you can say these two are the noble metals because they don't react with much with other elements right clear yes sir okay so whenever the more reactive metal is there it will go and displace the least reactive metal fine yes sir so any doubts in today's class no doubt sir okay i'll do one thing i'll send you one worksheet today and you have the exam also this week up to this topic prepare for yes, the exam up to this topic and i'll try to solve that problems also okay so, so did you get my one yeah i got it harini i checked it sir all are correct sir or any wrong yeah i'll check it once again i didn't remember exactly okay yeah next anyone no not sir okay